But the delivery as well. Uh, just popping the British end up. Uh, yeah, yeah it's exactly. Just, uh, play it again, Sam. Like, just what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I just can't get over the fact that when he jumps that car over that bridge, like even any old idiot watching a Bond film knows that that is the point where you play the theme tune. Da 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 da. As the as the cars flying over the bridge. How on earth that got through the editing process, I've got no idea. But, sorry, before I get too angry, let's move on. You you are so wrong. Roger Moore shall always remain the greatest uh, gentleman of all time. Uh, well, no, no, the, the topic was no, no, manliest thing, man. Manliest man, to be fair. Okay. Just because he's got hair on his grave, hands, grave mate, error. doesn't make him manly. Well, I, I mean, what, what? Yeah, but what constitutes a manliest man, though? What constitutes a man? What are we Hugh talking Jackman. about? Hugh Jackman, mate. Nah. Penis. I mean, yeah, he's all. He's yeah, he's top ten. I'll give you. But no, not only, not only is a terrific actor, Hugh Jackman, terrific, terrific singer. The man is a complete specimen. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I'm not of that persuasion, but I would. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I'm sorry. Hugh Jackman's great, but he's not the manliest man. In the, you can't. I don't think. And this might be controversial here, but if you're into musical theatre that much, you can't be. <laughs> That man. <laughs> oh, here we go. No, but it, it minuses. <laughs> it's at least a minus one on the man meter, surely, no? Not that it's bad. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. But if, if we're talking... You're not doing bicep curls, are you? Yeah, if we're talking uh, okay, about man Okay, if man. music theatre yeah. is minus one, surely the penny whistle is minus ten. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't play it. He was driving the car at the time. <laughs> he will always be Mr. Penny Whistle. <laughs> I know he had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you d- oh. you do know that in between takes on that film, he was smoking a giant cigar, playing <laughs> high stakes backgammon with the producer. Mate, the I time, could make right? my cat smoke a cigar. Don't make him a man. <laughs> yep, Not, uh, can I just state uh, to everybody, I would never make an animal smoke. <laughs> unless it's for money. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Uh, and kudos among other men. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> so, Greg, I forgot your answer because Adam's answer angered me so much. I forgot your answer. Well, I've forgotten my answer. You as said well, Bruce Willis. To be honest. You said Willis. Oh, uh, because it was meant to be manliest man in the UK, wasn't it? Uh, to be fair to uh, Adam as well. Perhaps oh, maybe okay. we. Yeah, and maybe, I, I maybe we. Because I said Bru- I had to say Bruce Willis because. I mean, you um, won't go Brosnan. Uh, if he's Irish, just maybe, maybe, but he's yeah. Irish. Yeah, he's, 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 oh. yeah, he's Northern. He's Northern, Northern Irish, isn't he? Uh, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> he's still part of the British Isles, yeah, my friend. Yeah, so, yeah I know. <laughs> um, he's a democratically elected Britain. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Brosnan if you'd like, but uh, yeah, he's too um, much of a poser. Listen, he's he's really good looking, but he is a poser. Yeah, when man, he's pa- I'd, be, I'd be a poser if I looked like that. Christ. Yeah, but there's the real, the essence of a man is that you wouldn't pose, even though you know full well that you look incredible. I'll give you that. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give You're you not, that. Yeah, I mean, as much as I love the opening scene in uh, Tomorrow Never Dies where he's pouting as he's spraying the Russians with machine gun fire from the Harrier jump jet, like, I still, um, you know, yeah. I'll still say that, you know, if, you, if you're pouting while you're doing that, you, you, my, again, minus one, to use your own terminology. Minus one on the man scale. Okay, I'll give you that. I don't think I can give you that, but that's fine. Uh, we'll agree <laughs> to disagree on that one. <laughs> God, blood is boiling. All right, let's move on. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, going back to cinema. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I do not take any pleasure in saying this, as mentioned my despise of cinema in general, but unfortunately, I think cinema is dead and die if not dead yeah. it is very rapidly dying because new films are being released straight to streaming services yeah um, terrible idea and yeah. you know i i don't know how i feel because i don't want to see any industry die um whether i like it or not um it's just unfortunately an inevitability yeah i think i think if they're going to release stuff straight to D, uh not DVD, straight to dvd but straight to streaming then it's going to it will kill off the smaller places. I think the places that will survive, though, actually, to be honest, will be the places that Adam goes to, the more high-end yeah. luxury yeah. Um, chains and the sort of Odeons and the Cineworlds and stuff. They'll die out. Yeah. Or they'll transition into that sort of higher-end market. I think they will 
I think there is always going to be a market for people wanting to spend a decent amount of money, have a nice meal, watch a film on a massive screen that they can mm. never afford themselves. Yeah. Um, but, and I don't feel sad about that, actually. The more I've, as I've re, like become more of a vicious capitalist, I'm like, okay with <laughs> stuff dying off. And, uh, <laughs> Take and no prisoners, eh, Greg? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, mate. No, it's, um, it's, uh, it's totally... As far as I'm concerned, it's fine if it happens, you know, yeah. because there'll be there'll be new jobs made because of it, you know. And uh, if if they are de- if they're deemed unworthy, then they can't make it. That's fine. So I wouldn't feel bad. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, uh, on this particular example, I'm inclined to agree with you because you know, like we've all said, like uh, going to the Odeon or the Cine World is so crap, isn't it? Like. I know it's I know it's cheap, but it's freezing in there. They don't even put the heating on anymore because they've got so you know they're over they can't afford their overheads. But it's like the people as well, mate. Like oh, it's people, hard, mate. The, people on their phones, people talking, mate. Yeah. I I feel like, uh, like you sh- if if you talk or if your phone goes off, you sh- you get your money back, but you're asked to leave straight away. Yeah, I feel like Charles Bronson. I feel like like literally murdering them in the cinema. <laughs> Like death, I knew it. like death, mate. Greg, death what did wish. I say about twenty minutes yeah. ago? There's a there's a yeah. serial killer in there. Told you. something will it'll, it'll crack one day. He's yeah, gonna I mean, snap, man. If have he hasn't you, have you seen Falling Down? Michael Douglas Falling yeah, Down. Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> that, yeah. That's you, mate. Such a good. In fact, I watched that for the first time a fortnight ago. Incredible oh, belter, absolute belter. Such a good film. But yeah, that maybe I'll snap one day. <laughs> Speaking of uh, industries going out, um, oh. this is a big one. I don't know your thoughts, Greg. I know Adams. We've had mm-hmm. debates. The Beeb. Oh, Auntie. <laughs> Auntie. The BBC. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did not understand that at all. Dude. Okay. Um, sorry, you used to be called I, Auntie yeah. back in the day. Yeah, you're too young, sure. Greg. <laughs> oh, sorry. You whippersnapper, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not that... I, I'm not that uh, bothered to be honest this is the thing with me is i think the bbc especially with its news has been people see it as this like uh paragon of trustworthy uh news telling it's oh it's down the center it's unbiased all this stuff and it's like it, no listen it can't be unbiased unbiased news doesn't exist in my opinion i don't think anyone can be unbiased we all we all have our biases so therefore i don't think a government should be spending money on something that it's not fit for purpose mm-hmm. um so and if it's not making money people don't want it then let it die i mean that's my it, point it is just i'll let you come in and sorry i'm taking over the that's time right. is uh yeah. <laughs> 36 minutes Jeez. past seven here's a uh, ario speedwagon <laughs> um unfortunately they just keep shooting themselves in the foot the bbc um you know 10 years ago i'd have fought for them with adam you know i'd have been first to defend them i just think technology has evolved so fast and they have not um if you want to watch it and if you want to pay for it that's fine but i don't think you should enforce people even if they don't watch it to pay okay yeah i'm gonna chime in go on then uh, so, listen, I'm a massive fan of the BBC. I think it provides a very vital service. Uh, I'm surprised, though, mate. You know, I, knowing I, yeah, your know. views on certain topics, I'm very surprised. Yeah, it is quite a sort of, I guess you could say, lefty thing to like the Is BBC your love for Partridge just getting in the way? <laughs> Maybe. My, I think my love is, of mate. I'm Alan I Partridge think, I, is clouding I think your judgment's judgment. been clouded. <laughs> well, listen, the, bef- you know, when TV only had one, two, three channels, the exactly. BBC was incredibly important but especially across the commonwealth because we sort of um provided this vast wealth of knowledge and entertainment and experience to the globe basically you know when people used to watch these things um and i still think despite it being less important these days i'll give you that it is less important it is still vitally important for lots of people sort of um more elderly people, poorer people, people who live across the Commonwealth, uh, people who are are actually sick of this Americanization of of everything that we consume, right? Listen, I love America, and I love the stuff, lots of the stuff that comes out of America, but surely nobody can argue that everything that we consume nowadays, clothing, drinks, food, 
entertainment, music, everything is very Americanized. You know, we've got adverts everywhere. There's 27, you know, on Netflix now it says limited series when there are 10 episodes of the series. Think about Faulty Towers and Vicar of Dibley. They're only six, and that's a full series, right? So mm. everything's been influenced by America, and the BBC still upholds this sort of um, this flag for sort of uh, creative truthfulness. Um, sorry, creativity, truthfulness. I, I kind of agree with you, Greg, but I'm still going to say impartiality because it's as impartial as something can be, even though it's not perfect. Mm. Still pretty impartial. In theory, its job is to uh, promote good talent, good, uh, good sport, good drama, good writing, all this sort of stuff, regardless of whether you are somebody famous living in L.A. or not. You know, So they've been the sort of bastion of these uh, comedians and writers and performers and uh, basically anyone who's, who's either um, young or inexperienced or, you know, they're just talented people. You know, they've had this long track record of encouraging this and building this. And it's essentially like a tax, like we are paying um, our license fee to sort of fund this, fund and encourage these young people to create great stuff, basically, and to try and... Uh, sorry I'm waffling a bit but try and spread the word of like good quality stuff impartial stuff um, and stuff that perhaps might get overlooked by massive corporations like Netflix or Apple or Sky or God knows what else so I think despite it having declined in certain years and it's actually uh, losing its core audience because those people that I've just described older poorer younger less famous these groups of people they're not actually representing those people anymore so i will sort of stick the boot in there because they're not representing the people they should do however if they were to represent those people correctly as they should do it provides a a great service um and if you don't watch anything to do with the bbc uh, then you don't have to pay the license fee but if you re-watch episodes of uh, the Office, or I'm Alan Partridge, or Faulty Towers, or whatever, like we all have, then you should pay your way, basically, like taxes. Because the mm-hmm. point that I made to Pete a few weeks ago was that, listen, lots of people don't like it, increasingly so. However, at the moment, uh, the government hasn't abolished the license fee. So at the moment, you've got to like it or lump it. By all means, uh, scream to high heavens that you dislike it and vote against it, but you've mm-hmm. still got to pay your fee. And if you don't, then you get fined, right? It's just like a tax for no, lots of people. Can I just chime in here? Um, yeah, of course. You, you you won't get fined, mate. You only get fined if you watch uh, BBC or live television. Uh, I, I've, I, I've, I don't know. I've I don't know what the specific mine. rules. I don't know what the specific rules are. But like, as yeah. long as, um, assuming you know the rules clearly, and if you disobey the rules, then you can't kick off if you get a fine through the door is what i'm saying yeah uh, oh oh of course of course um yeah. but going back to uh you know releasing good quality can i just point you to christmas day uh <sighs> mrs brown's boys oh god that yeah. was the highlight of the bbc well uh, listen <laughs> I, I yeah I'll, I'll i'll give you that because it's a pile of crap in my opinion i don't i don't like it it's not really for me however there's a massive uh target audience there for mrs brown's boys and some of those people do you know how many people watched it mate on christmas day loads i bet 3.8 millions the lowest viewed ever is it oh okay well fair enough exit but they've they've just signed a new five-year contract all right okay interesting so this is this is sorry to interrupt there but this is my point and this might um maybe you can give me your thoughts on this but if they weren't artificially kept alive by this sort of uh, well, the licensing fee and the fact that you can't watch live television unless you have a, a TV license, even though you're maybe watching. Cause for example, if I want to watch ITV, um, Channel 4, Sky, you have any to other have channel, a TV license. I have to have a TV license. Exactly right. Even though the BBC is going to be benefiting from the, the purchase of that. ITV and any- Channel 4 and Sky don't get any of that money, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that they're being artificially sort of kept alive, and what all that's doing is it's either delaying the inevitable or it's stopping them having to in, uh, um, innovate and make themselves better to hook more people to actually want to pay for their service. I think, both in my mate. opinion, so so I feel like all we're doing now is we're giving them leeway to make these terrible decisions for longer. 
And if you get rid of that, then they're like, oh, God, we actually have to do stuff that 